Okay, everybody, this is my spoiler review of Poker Face Episode 5, Time of the Monkey. This was directed by Lucky McKee and written by Wyatt Kane and Charlie Peppers. Now, what makes this episode stand out from the rest and really just stand out in this type of format is it completely subverts expectations. Like, this episode's a masterclass in doing that. And it doesn't just do it in its own sense of its own story. It does it in our own what we're used to in watching TV anthology stories or just stories like this where it's like a mystery of the week that you kind of can see the writing on the wall about 20 minutes in and who we're rooting for and it completely in this one flips it because it's changing what you're used to in stories like this and that you're usually rooting for the activist and the rebel and the person who's smoking the pot and doing the thing that's not normal but they flip it on you and it works because you're getting that same experience through our main character in Charlie. And what also makes this episode great is like why I loved episode three is it has the best villains in it. And this is definitely the two best villains of the show to date with Irene and Joyce. When you have someone who is more of a threat, more interesting, more complicated, it makes it that much more interesting of having them as a foe against Charlie. And what also works well in this episode, like every episode of the show, and it's still consistent, is that everything means something. Everything has a little payoff here in so many little setups. And not only is it just setups with the mystery itself, but with the humor. And that goes to moments I really loved, even just with characters we meet very shortly, like Pervy Pete or the Fletchers watching murder shows. I love the joke with the Fletchers where everything's a scars guard and she's like, is that another scars guard? And then it comes up as the opening credits as a scars guard and she's like, yep. And even jokes, right? Like, I love them thinking that she's a millennial fully, Charlie, and that they call it Euphorica instead of Euphoria. But again, there was also some fun camera work in that Ryan Johnson style this episode that as showrunner, he's definitely had the directors keep consistent, like the quick crash zooms. And you see one here that really shows the impact when they take all the sound out and zoom in on Gabriel walking in the impact that has on Irene and Joyce that they, this is a guy they thought was dead. But a good, good job at leaving out specific moments so it really makes you think that they're doing this in the right, that you're like, okay, you know, is this the episode we root for the killers here? Is that what they're doing here? But no, they get you in that sense. They fool you that it's not and that they're really bad people that want to blow up children and I also love they've been doing a consistent thing where when we're seeing what's going on with our killers first and we haven't seen Charlie yet there's always a hint of Charlie or we hear her and I like that the one little hearing of Charlie we got was when Irene was in the bathroom and you hear Charlie when they're getting ready to go to the zoo say bus is ready so that's kind of give you a hint of where she was in that moment this one was a little quicker to getting to see Charlie it was only 11 minutes before we actually saw her and we see it actually starts one week before the actual zoo trip and the killing and they gave little hints of what was really happening and who was really we're supposed to be rooting for very subtle but there was a moment in the beginning here when we see Charlie first talking to Betty and that Betty's uptight she's calling out things that are against the normal but Betty does laugh at a very crass Charlie joke, which was a little hint that Betty is way more chill than we think. And that also, when Gabriel was confessing to what he did to Irene and Joyce, that he said, what I clearly did was right. That was a big moment where he had to pause and be like, wait a minute, if he was just a full-on snitch and, you know, was doing something against his cause, there had to be a reason if he's saying he still thought it was the right thing he did. Especially because, like, he said it hurt the ones he loved. So that was another big hint. I love what they did visually, though, hiding things. Like, when they're informing Charlie, Irina Joyce, about their group and their cause, they don't show what they're actually making. I guess you just assume they're making posters or whatever, but they're actually making pressure cooker bombs, which was crazy. And we get really good payoffs which I think is going to be a fan favorite this episode is because it's a humorous one, right? With the photo of the band Droopy Hughes who used the picture of this activist group and that she recognizes it at the wake of Gabriel and that he had a fire hydrant, you know what? So that really paid off well. But I think what was most effective at subverting expectations and throwing you for a loop and made this so effective was when they're telling charlie about the raid and that they were going to set the world on fire and this raid was like just intense guns blazing and they actually showed irene getting shot and her losing her legs you really felt for irene and joyce in that moment and you even feel like charlie does where she's crying in that moment so 
as powerful as that was, it still fooled you. And making it so powerful, you're like, oh, yeah, there's no way they're going to flip this any other way. Like, this is what happened. We're rooting for Irene and Joyce. But it doesn't. You know, it plays with you. And that's when you start to get the real hint of what their true character is about when Joyce says, we never forgive. And that will come full circle, of course, when Gabriel confesses and they don't forgive him at all. Also, little moments that are nice touch watching it on a second watch is that when Charlie first brought Gabriel into his room, she asked her, would you like the window closed? And he said, no, I like it cold. Another moment where you're like, man, if he just liked his window closed, there's no way Joyce would have got in there. And again, just the attention detail, right? That Charlie would think that they were going to smoke pot at the zoo when they left, so she wouldn't be too worried about that. And that when she goes and watches this monkey show, I started laughing. I actually thought it was a better effect that they had this such a fake monkey here that was computer inserted in a show like this. I thought that was actually really funny. And I really like this actor from Big Bang Theory. I thought he was perfectly cast here as Luca. He works really well with Natasha Lyonne. And I think they're definitely setting him up to be a character who reappears. This is going to be the connection that she can trust in the FBI and kind of help clear her name to any ties to what's going on with Sterling. And like he said, he could help her in a pinch. So I think he'll be someone who appears maybe in the finale again to clear her name or again, help her get the bigger bad. But that's the fooling thing in this episode is that you already thought you got all the information you needed, but the actual big twist of this episode is that what they were planning to do, Irene and Joyce, that they are actually the villains and they were planning to bomb a model UN. Now, Charlie always has great, clever comebacks that are quick and very witty. And I really love this one because when she's talking to Joyce and Irene and now she's getting the inkling of what they're really about, they say to her, we hate pigs and rats, obviously talking about Charlie with the rat part. And Charlie says back, I hate pigs, rats, and snakes, talking about them. And they're both obviously sitting in green so that really worked for me i thought it was great and we see 223 time of the monkey we're going to the title of the episode here is she starts connecting all the dots when he had died gabriel and then sees the heart data and that dramatically changed when they left for the zoo and they had a nice moment where they tied in betty really well where she had actually saw them and thought they were using electric dildo during the the monkey show and she missed the monkey show but unfortunately for betty she told irene this and it cost her her life and it again set up how dangerous these two women were by having them also kill Betty. Now, I love when they, Charlie shows up to their place and how they do that whip pan to Charlie when they think they got away with this and killing Betty as well. And what it sets up in that apartment scene is literally a very Quentin Tarantino-esque fight. And what I mean by that is it's very like using everything around you. It's silly, it's funny, and it's brutal. I love when Charlie says, I draw the line at fighting little old ladies. And her getting stabbed in the leg was just great. And it's the second time the poor neighbor who's just trying to guard and is disturbed by the, all these sounds from this house and charlie just gets to that taser in time alerting the fbi agent through a heart cuff that was really risky on charlie's part i know people were saying in prior episodes like you know she's really put herself in a lot of danger confronting all these murderers like that she wouldn't get killed so this one really showed you a moment where she actually almost did get herself killed and i love that just to give these villains a great way to go out is that they still almost got charlie in the golf cart exploding that was a great way and a great way to end the episode. And like I said, they're setting up definitely something where Luca's going to appear again. I think he really works with Natasha Leon, so he'd be a great character to keep coming back. So I'm giving this episode a 9.2. I thought this was the best of the season so far. Let me know, though, what you thought of this episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And please subscribe. It helps me in so many ways. You have no idea. Please follow me at Steve Varley Show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for more of me. And I'll see you next time.